welcome to John from Accountable Services. Thank you so much for joining me. Please, won't you just introduce yourself to everybody and tell us what, what it is that you do? Okay, yeah, thanks, Tasneem. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I'm John Smith and I'm from Accountable, all the the full name would be Accountable Office Management and Accounting Solutions. But to keep it short, Accountable. Um, and yeah, we are a medical billing bureau. And, um, you know, so we initially started off, we've been running the medical billing bureau for a couple of years now. And um, the reason why I think we started the company and the business is that we found that we were dealing with a lot of therapists, especially allied and therapeutic therapists, um, where we found that, you know, they were all smaller practices or maybe larger practices, but they were doing all of their own admin and all of their own practice management and all of their own medical billing and their bookings and diaries and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's also difficult for them to have the time to see their patients during the day, um, you know, and then to do sit at night and on weekends to do their, their, their admin stuff and their medical billing stuff and following up on accounts and making sure that their money came in. So, we saw that there was definitely, and we, we actually do cater for allied therapists mostly. And um, we found that, um, you know, some of the, the, the companies would be, or the practices might be a bit smaller, or they don't have as many staff as bigger practices or doctor's practices or dentists or stuff like that, where, you know, they definitely had a time constraint. And, you know, take it a lot of therapists or a lot of practitioners all over, you know, they, they, they went to study to be a practitioner, not to be an admin person or not mm. to be doing admin at night. You know, you also have a life. You also want to spend some time with your family on, you know, at night on weekends. So um, we did find that there was um, a lot of, a lot of practitioners that needed uh, assistance, you know, with that. Yeah. And um yeah, so I think that's uh, the main reason why we started on our side with uh, the Medical Billing Bureau. So let's get into, since you're talking about Medical Billing Bureau, what exactly is a Medical Billing Bureau? Yeah, so I would say a Medical Billing Bureau is a, a third party um, administrator that assists you with um, with your medical billing. And well, if we talk about medical billing, we need to actually take it back a few steps and we need to talk about um, practice management, you know, okay. admin management, practice management, stuff like that. You know, when you're looking at um, even starting through from your diaries, what system and software are you using on your diaries? And, you know, are you booking patients online? Is it web-based through to um, seeing your patients, you know, obviously, and then your billing, you know, are you using a medical billing software? Are you doing it by yourself? Are you using Excel? And um, what, what, what program or what means are you using to do your medical billing with, you know, and then following up on uh, your claims that you've sent through to medical aids, are you are you having a look at your bank statements and reconning your accounts? Are you making sure that when the accounts are being paid, that they recon into the system so that you know who owes you money and who does not owe you money? Is it an automated system? Is it a manual system that's, uh, that's taking a lot of time um, you know, and stuff like that? And then also, at the end of the day, even going through to your bookkeeping. You know, your bookkeeping, your accounting, your, your, are you using any software to do that at the end of the day? Um, and basically the whole practice management when it comes to your admin and everything else that you need to do in your business that's not treating a patient, you know. Yeah. And I think practitioners, like I mentioned, you know, they've, they've studied, uh, you know, many years. And I'm sure there might be some modules when it comes to admin and, um, you know, practice management, but no one really teaches you and helps you on that side. You know, you know how to treat a patient and that takes your whole day, you know, depending on how busy you are as a practitioner, you know, it might take you the whole day. You know, you might be seeing back to back patients. You don't have time for your admin. You don't have time for billing. And then at night, you know, when you get at home at six o'clock in the evening, you still need to feed the kids, feed yourself, take a bath, <laughs> get the kids to bed, do everything that you need to do. By eight o'clock at night, you know, then you need to go and sit down and go and do your billing. 
yeah. you, know, you need to do your billing, you need to do your admin practice admin, you need to do your bookkeeping if you don't have a bookkeeper. And, you know, weekends, you know, you don't, you almost don't have a life, you know. So, <laughs> so it's, do I, do I use, do I do everything myself? You know, so a lot of practitioners would say, listen, let me do it myself, especially also new practitioners, you know starting mm. off a new practice you don't have a lot of money to waste or you don't have a lot of money um, and you need to slowly but surely get the business on its feet yeah and um, you know so it's also a difficult decision do i outsource my admin and my practice practice admin and my administration and my medical billing and my bookkeeping and my accounting do i outsource that or do i do it myself you know um and do I have the time for that, you know, or uh, do I need to focus on my practice, focus on um, getting uh, my marketing, my referrals, um, you know, chatting to patients, getting recurring patients in, um, you know, getting referring doctors to work with me, or, you know, it's kind of like your time management as well. Mm. What, what, what you can do on that side. Yeah. I think from, a, um, from my own experience, um, what I have found as a business owner in, in, the, in the past, my mistakes that I've made, is that if we are really honest, a lot of the times we choose to do, to do the things that we are more comfortable with. And yeah. for a lot of health professionals, the selling of your services is yeah. hell of a scary because we don't think of ourselves as salespeople. It, yeah. It's kind of yucky for us, like, because we want to be doing good. So where we should actually be as health professionals, when you are trying to build your practice, you should be working more on the getting more clients in, but that is kind yeah. of the uncomfortable bit because yeah. we're not comfortable with it. It's easier to take on the task of doing the admin, yes, even though it's going to cost more time. But um, like what I like to say is if you think about what would be like your hourly rate in your practice, and let's say that it's 450, just for, for example, if you are spending an hour doing admin, that's 450 rand that you Less. basically this that you can earn because yes. you are spending it on an admin task. So, yeah. um, but I think if health professionals are really honest with themselves, the reason why they choose to do the, uh, the admin stuff themselves, as opposed to actually putting themselves out there and working on getting more yeah. clients through the door is because that is more uncomfortable and we don't like yeah. doing that part. So yeah, I, yeah, I really, I hear what you're saying. So let's talk a little bit about then who is um, using a, who is it right for to use a medical billing bureau as opposed to um, getting, uh, doing it in-house and getting a software and, and what, what would be the alternative if you don't want to necessarily do it yourself? Um, what would be the alternative and which solution is best for who? Yeah, so I think for any any practitioner out there, whether they doing it in house and doing it themselves, or outsourcing to a company like us, you know, as a medical billing bureau, I think it's in the good interest for any practitioner to automate a lot of their systems, you know, to save time and to automate a lot of the systems. And you know, when when it's coming to um, just time management and you know, just making life easier for yourself, I think even starting within your practice management and your admin side, the first step is booking patients. You know, yeah. so. If you're using a diary system, you know, a lot of practitioners are still using their, their, their physical manual books, you know, where they keeping their diaries and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of practitioners would prefer doing that, but there is software that automates a lot of your, your, your life, you know, and, and, and makes it easier for you to have all of your information on the go. You know, if you're looking at, um, 
a web-based diary. So, I mean, there's a lot of different programs and softwares that you can use for a web-based diary system where you can book patients online or, you know, obviously book them in a digital format. So you would have a calendar running. You know, you can use the free options like Google Calendar or those things. And um, But what we found is there is really nice programs out there that can also automate a, a, a few other systems for you. You know, for example, some of our practitioners that we work with, they use a, a software or program called Bookem. So it's Book E-M, Bookem. Okay. Um, and it's a very nice program. Um, you know, you, 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 you've, you've got your diaries for different practitioners, different locations on the same program. But what's also nice is, is that uh, when you do book a patient into the system, um, it automatically sends out an SMS or an email to that person with like a, a, an automated digital intake form for your patient. You know, for name, surname, uh, telephone numbers, addresses, medical aid details, all of that stuff that you would normally have a printed out uh, document giving that through to your patient, it can automatically send them that link on an SMS, they click on the link, and they go and actually complete all of their details beforehand. So by the time that you see them, you already have all of the information. You know, as soon as they submit that form on their phone or on their laptop, it automatically pulls all of that information into the system and you already have that and you don't have to go and double um, you know go and go go and capture that information from a manual form again you know wasting time so you you already have it in a digital format in your program and there you book them you you can book your patients if you have multiple practitioners you can book multiple practitioners um, in your in your practice you can have an overview of everyone in there and you've automated that system you know mm. you've automated a portion of that which would have cost you more time if you were to give them manual forms to complete it manually and then you have to capture it into your diary system or you need to capture it into your medical billing mm. software you know, so, so I, I think, think also yeah. from a user's point of view um, um, for me, when I need to make an appointment, um, I like to be able to choose my own date and time. So yeah. I find it very really frustrating when I phone, uh, like with GPs, they usually have because they have shorter slots. But if yeah. I need to make an appointment, like say for a dentist, for example, and I phone in the receptionist and then they'll, they'll say, okay, then I'll say, okay, what about that date? And they're like, no, there's nothing there. Or what about that date? And then they don't have the time you want. Then it's like back and forth, back and forth. Whereas, yeah. Do you also have solutions where you can actually go and choose your own date and time based on the availability of the... Of yeah, the like this, yeah, like this program I was just talking about, Bookem, Book mm. EM. Um, very nice. It's got all those automated functions um, with the automated forms, but it also have, uh, has online booking capabilities. So okay. you can go and set up your online booking. You set up your available hours. If you say on a Monday, I'm available from 8 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock. And on a Wednesday, I'm available from 2.30 in the afternoon until 5. So you choose as a practitioner, what is your available time slots? Hmm. And then that is the parameters on the program where people can log into and automatically book a date and a time with you. Um, and then you're notified of that booking. Okay. So, um, yeah, so it, it makes it quite nice and easy. There's links for those bookings that you can put onto your website, onto your Facebook page, where people can basically just click on it and go and book an appointment with you. So right. online booking also helps a lot because practitioners are also quite busy during the day. You see yeah. patients, maybe if you only you're the only person in the practice and you sing, you don't have a receptionist, you know, that helps a bit. So you don't yeah. need a receptionist because everyone can just go and book online. Yeah. You know, it's a bit and, futuristic. And also, like, if you think about, like, for me as a parent who works, I maybe don't have time to now go and phone during the day. So now I think about, oh, I need to make an appointment for my child for OT, but now they're closed already because it's like after working hours. Sure. I can now go and make an appointment at night and how cool isn't it as a therapist to wake up in the morning and see oh i've got appointments like yeah, they, awesome. they created themselves <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's almost like akin to having an online store and making sales in your sleep because yeah. that's kind of what happens because people can now do it themselves so 
I think that is something that is underutilized in, in our profession. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I think some practitioners are a bit scared of using this automated thing because then mm. you're not in control. And yeah. a lot of <laughs> a lot of practitioners want to have control, you know. Yeah. A lot of practitioners are OCD and they want to have control of, 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 of their schedules. And you don't want someone to book somewhere where you didn't actually want them to book. Mm. But like I mentioned, if you set it up correctly, mm. then... Um, Patients can only book in the time slots that you've given them as your availability. Mm. You know, and if something happens and you're not available for that day, you can basically just cancel or you can block that time. Or if you're going on holiday, you just block that time out so that no mm. one can actually book those appointments in those slots. So yeah. it's not as scary as they might think. You know, it's, it's actually quite a nice thing mm. you know, if, if they can utilize that. But you know, I think the next step after booking your appointments, getting your forms out, getting your forms in, um, your intake forms so that you have your, your info from the patients, the next uh, step is obviously they're going to come through for their appointment. You're going to see them and do your treatment. But after that, you need to bill. So um, that's where the medic where medical billing software comes quite in handy. So I mean, there there is obviously a cost to that. There's a cost to everything, a cost. But you know, it's 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 sometimes minimal, uh, depending on practice by practice. But uh, when it comes to software for medical billing, it's also something that is really for any practitioner, whether you are outsourcing your medical billing or whether you're doing it yourself or you're doing it in-house, you know, um, there's still, you know, a couple of practitioners that are, you know, creating invoices on Excel or creating invoices on Word and you know, where it's a manual system where you're creating that. And by all means, you can do that because it's saving you money. And, um, you know, obviously at the end of the day, uh, you can still send that through via email to your different medical aids. It's just quite cumbersome and time consuming to do it that way. I must be honest, um, where you have to type everything out and you have to make it look nice and neat and then send it through to the medical aid. And then also the pros after that will become very manual you know to see if you've received payments to recon your accounts to do stuff like that so i think when it comes to medical billing software it also saves you a lot of time and a lot of effort and it really streamlines the process and automates everything you know you would initially have ported your patients into the system loaded your patient onto the system with their icd-10 codes you know so you've got record of the icd-10 codes you've got maybe records of um, authorization codes you've got a you know you've got capabilities of loading authorization which automatically picks up the dates and times when that authorization is valid for whether it's in hospital or whether it's a prescribed minimum benefit authorization how many sessions it counts off your sessions you know if you had 20 sessions you can see how many invoices you've created mm. and how many of those claims have attached that authorization. So you can see, okay, I initially started with 20 prescribed minimum benefit treatment sessions and I've used 11, so I only have nine left. You know, So it's a nice automated system to use where you can also, you know, you, you can any, at, at any given stage, you can call up any of your, your, your patients um, from the system and see the history. When last did you see them? What do they owe you? Pull a statement, send a statement out in seconds, you know? You don't have yeah. to go and sit and create a statement for your patient on Excel or Word. You can, within seconds, you just pull that statement out and you can email it directly, even from the system. So you don't even have to send an email. You just email it from the system and it would literally take you two seconds to send that. So I think... Um, you know, capturing of claims on the medical uh, uh, on the on the medical software system, it's really easy. Um, sending the claims out via EDI, yes, okay. EDI also costs you money per switch or per claim that you're sending through via EDI, um, but that's immediate. It goes through immediately to your different medical aids. It's linked up to all your different medical aids, and within. 20 seconds, you already have an answer from the medical aid. Are they going to pay for that claim or are they not going to pay for that claim? Mm. You know, so just if, if we can, just for those who don't know, what does EDI stand for? What is that? It's just a, it's, it's just an electronic way of switching your claim. They call it a switch. 
So it's basically the middle, it's like a middle, middle man link between your software and discovery, for example. You've got the switch house, switch hub that you send your claim directly through and, and it automatically, if I sit on the phone with a discovery person now and I send my claim through EDI, 20 seconds later, they'll already see it on the other side uh, on that patient's okay. membership number. So it's just an automated system and also it's electronic. So it gives you an answer. So mm -hmm. it tells you, listen, yes, it's been uh, approved and we will pay for it because the member does have benefits on their okay. plan or they still have savings left. But also it also gives you a rejection. Mm -hmm. So if there's no medical savings, if there's no benefits, it also rejects that claim and says, listen, the medical is not going to pay for it. So the patient is liable for it. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing that in-house and you've got a receptionist or an admin lady or an admin person doing your accounts for you, they can they can actually send that claim off to the medical aid while the patient is standing there okay. and they can get an answer. Is it pay paying from the medical aid or is it not? You know, okay. if it rejects, you can, you can tell that patient, okay, sorry, you don't have any, call, any funds available. So you are liable for that and they can pay before they even before leave they the leave. practice, mm -hmm. you know? So, so I think also what the most commonly asked question in all of the Facebook groups of allied professionals is, does anybody have the rates for this medical aid? Does anybody have it? That is like the most commonly asked question. So does the billing software also have, enable you to have access to that? I mean, what you charge is a whole different topic, which I will do in another separate video altogether. Sure. But if you are somebody who is reliant on the medical aid dates, um, not knowing all, because each medical aid has different rates for different things, is that easy yeah. to come by if you use the software? Yes, of course. Yeah. So the medical billing software sorts everything out for you that you can imagine, you know. So um, with the medical billing software, every year, January, they update, it automatically updates all the pricing for all. And there's probably what, 250, 300 different medical aids, mm -hmm. you know. So it automatically updates the rates for the new year and the increase rate for the new year for all medical aids across the board. So it's, it's, it's so much easier for you. You basically, if you are charging medical aid rates, your patients are linked with their accounts and their different medical aids and where it just automatically pulls in the correct pricing. So okay. if Discovery is, is paying 100, 100 Rand for a tariff code, it'll pull through 100 Rand. If Bonitas is paying 110 Rand for that same tariff code, it'll automatically have updated that and your invoices and your claims will be according to that. So, so it also yeah. helps. So again, then it helps because if you, even if you are charging medical aid rates, if some, if one medical aid is paying less for something, you would then know how much your patient is then liable for because they would then be liable for the copay. Um, yeah, and like, the medical aid yeah, copay. like I said, if um, so, some practices have a set practice rate so that you can also obviously do, mm. or some practices would work on the discovery rate, for example. Yeah. You know, and uh, like I mentioned, as soon as you switch that claim electronically via EDI, it gives you an answer in 20 seconds. You know, mm. if there's a short payment on this tariff code for 10 Rand, you would know that immediately, you know, mm. so you would either then, um, you know, have that on the system if you didn't, if you didn't bill while the, while the patient was there. Mostly people don't bill while the patient is there because you don't have time. You know, mm. you don't have time. Even if you're seeing back to back patients, you'll maybe bill in the evenings or on weekends mm. or, you know, it'll be on their system, on the statement, but it's also nice. You know, the, the medical billing software would have age analysis. It would have who's owing you money, who's not owing mm. you money, sending mm. out bulk statements to all of your patients. You know, you can do a monthly month end um, statement run where you send out um, statements to every single patient owing money. And that's automated, you know, mm. you don't have to do that in the, individually for each and every person. Mm. It's, it's an automated system. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's great. Okay, so I think the next thing um, to to chat about is then where does, if you, ha there's, there's the medical billing software like you spoke about now. So what role does the medical billing bureau or the service like you was then, where do you come into this whole um, process? 
Yeah, so I think where we come into it as a medical billing bureau is most practitioners don't have time to do all of these processes themselves. Okay, so um, it's basically outsourcing your 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 admin, your practice management, your admin procedure, and your medical billing procedure. At the end of the day, you need to out. You know, if you don't have the time to sit in the evenings doing it yourself and on weekends, you know, you can then basically outsource to a medical billing bureau like us. So we basically, what we do is we take everything um, into consideration. We, we compile everything for you in one service. So we would load patients onto the system, you know, to load all of your patients with their authorizations, with their ICD-10 codes. You know, it's, it's time consuming to load patients onto the system. You know, we would load the patients on the system, we would do the medical billing, we'll switch with the medical aids, and we would then obviously also see what happens. So with rejections, especially, if there's no no payment from the medical aid or there's a rejection, then we, we follow up on the medical aid account. So we follow up on the medical aid. So these days, uh, we can sit on the phone for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, just to sort out one claim for one patient that yeah. a medical aid might have messed up. You know, yeah. maybe the patient's supposed to uh, have paid out of prescribed minimum benefits, but the system didn't pick up that there was a prescribed minimum benefit in place and it didn't pay. So now we need to sort out this issue. You know, it could take about 30 minutes on the phone with discovery, 45 minutes on the phone. And you have, if you have five of those issues a day, you're sitting on the phone with discovery for three hours, you know, or <laughs> with Momentum or Hosmed or Gems or whoever, you can be sitting on the phone for three hours a day just to sort out five of your hundred claims that didn't go through correctly. Mm. You know, so most practitioners don't have time for that. So in a sense, the software makes it easier to bill, mm. but the difficult part is getting the money in, mm. you know, ensuring that your money comes in at the end of the day. That is the most difficult portion of, mm. you know, accounts and medical billing is, is where we need to follow up with medical aids. We need to sort out authorizations. And also if it's, if it's practitioners working in hospital, you know, so if you're working in a hospital, you have to have an authorization in place to see your patient. You know, and if you're seeing a patient in a hospital for five days, but the authorization initially was only granted for two days, mm. you know, you need to update the authorization. You need to get the case manager at the hospital to update the case with the case manager at the medical scheme. Otherwise, mm. you won't get an updated authorization and you won't get payment. So mm. that could take time, you know, on the phone. And most practitioners during the day, they're busy treating patients. Mm. You know, that's mm. what they do. So you don't have time during the day when it's business hours to go mm. and phone medical aides, to go and phone doctors for referral letters, to go and phone hospitals to get the case managers to update cases. Mm. So there's a lot of stuff that we do behind the scenes to ensure that uh, the claims are going through, the claims are sorted out with the medical aids for any rejections, any problems, any issues authorizations are up to date, authorizations are updated frequently if in a mm. hospital, um, you know, all of those things. And then also following up with the patients, if, you know, in a lot of instances, especially after the mid, mid, mid year, everyone's savings has run out, everyone's benefits have run out, you know, and you get a lot of rejections from the medical aids and, you know, patients are liable. And sometimes you get pay, patients that pay well and sometimes you get patients that don't pay well. Yeah. You know, so we follow up on the patients always in a friendly manner. Obviously, the main goal is for for you to retain your patients, but you also need to get paid. You know, you mm. also have a business that you're running and um, it's, it's not a charity, you know? So at the end of the day, um, you have to, whatever you've done, treatments you've done, time that you've spent, you know, seeing patients, you need to be reimbursed for that time, mm. you know? And what we found with a lot of practitioners, especially coming on uh, to us for our services is where, um, they might be getting 70% of the income every month is coming in easily, but 30% of the income is not coming in. You know, so for uh, uh, some of the practitioners, that might might mean it's ten thousand rand that's not coming in every month. Uh, uh. You know, or it's fifty thousand rand that's not coming in every month. 
You know, so if you look at 10,000 uh, over a year, it's 120,000 that you've lost out on. Mm. 50,000 is even more, you know. So if you look at that, where we just streamline the processes and follow up on the accounts daily uh, mm. or weekly or however we have to, to ensure that um, your, your income actually comes in, you know. Mm. And then, well, Within Accountable, we also do bookkeeping. We've got bookkeeping services and accounting services. So that's kind of like your last step that you also have to have in place for practice management. You know, you have to also have your, your bookkeeping and your taxes and your personal tax and your provisional tax and VAT if you need to. You know, you also need to run a software where you're keeping track of all your income, all your expenses, everything that needs to go through to the bookkeeper, the accountant. You also need a bookkeeping software unless you're also outsourcing that to another third party. Right. So within Accountable, we do all of those functions in one company. Okay. So we also, you know, we can, we can do the bookkeeping, the accounting, the tax, all of those sample things. And I think it's just where we found with a lot of practitioners is just a time saving and uh, just making your practice more efficient at the end of the day mm. where you can more focus on your diaries and focus on getting patients in and retaining patients and you know focusing on growing your your practice as a business where you don't have to spend that time on the admin side of it mm -hmm. and the billing side of it and yeah. the bookkeeping side of it yeah Okay. No, thank you so much. I think that um, that was a really good overview to understanding because I think that is a, a lot of health professionals. Um, there's a lot of confusion around the different options out there and there are obviously different softwares out there. So I think um, this just gave a good understanding of how it all ties together and, you know, why, why it would be a good idea to explore the option of using a, a medical billing bureau. So thank you so much for your time. Um, you would so you like to... Me. No, you're welcome. And so would you like to maybe just end off um, how can people contact you, um, all that kinds of stuff? Um, yeah, so I think I'll give you our email and telephone numbers uh, so that you can maybe add it to the post when you do post this video up. Um, but yeah, you guys are um, very welcome to contact us on admin at accountablesa.co.za. And you can even give me a call on a personal number, 83 Double six five double two double five, okay, and then okay. um, we can have a chat and we can do quotations and see exactly what your business or your practice actually needs and what solution would be the best for you. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I will definitely put all of that information in the description box below sure. the video and um, also up on the screen after editing. So that'll be great. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed.